the stock market has weakened on reports that the GOP could not pass the Obamacare repeal. Let's look at a few items today. I want to begin with the Federal Reserve. Look at the Fed's assets over time. You can see that as soon as QE3 has stopped, that marks the point where for a few years the stock market remained within a trading range. This is the only time since the financial crisis where the stock market has not followed along with whatever the Fed's assets were at. This marks a very interesting time right now. So let's get into some of these articles, beginning with this one here. Total IOUs in the U.S. No matter which of these you choose, whether we're looking at government debt, private debt, pension liabilities, and so on, we see an impossibility to ever be paid back. Let's even take the lowest one, which is government debt. It's already around 100%, meaning statistically, mathematically, impossible to pay back. Then when you add in the private debt and the pensions and all of the other unfunded liabilities, you start to see a very interesting picture. Now, just because you borrow from the future does not mean that it doesn't have to be paid back and it doesn't cause a burden today. Look how serious the situation has become. Moving on. Union Pay, China's biggest interbank payments platform, has barred Chinese customers from using its transaction system to shop for property in Hong Kong. That's the latest show of tightening capital controls on the mainland. We have seen this going on. I'm just bringing you the updates as it happens. China is clearly engaging in capital controls at this time. One by one, they're trying this. And you can see that with the rise of Bitcoin, everything has happened as to try to be a loophole for what has happened within China. Let's move on. This is a very telling story right here. When you have 52 of the 100 largest U.S. cities were majority renter in 2015, and that trend, interestingly enough, since the financial crisis, things have really changed, but not in a way that would make sense. 2009, as an example, looking at Atlanta City, Georgia, 51% in 2009. Then, 2015, 43%. It has declined, even though the prices of housing had come, to, come down significantly after the financial crisis, people should have been able to buy more and more. Yet, at this time, they are still hurting. Now, sure, there are many who have done well, particularly those who had a lot of exposure to equities. But it all depends on when they bought in, whether they're sophisticated or not. A lot of people look at the pension funds. They are still heavily indebted. Big, big problem right now. Then I just wanted to quickly note this. Asset and real economy price divergence in the last cycles. And you can see the difference here between something like the uh, MSCI world and uh, others versus the U.S. wages. Clearly a very big difference when wages have barely increased whatsoever and compare that to the S&P, you see a very different picture. So I see the real economy, the real wealth not increasing when you have very small in particular, not even the entire asset. For example, you're looking at the equities market. It's even more specific because it's a lot of individual stocks that are pushing it up. And then you compare the soft data to the hard data, and it is clear that it, a lot of the rise that we have seen is based on the soft data. The hard data doesn't necessarily show anything. It is very, very, you know, we are way a ways away from having any true hard data come in that can be convincing. And last but not least, bankers reaped lavish bonuses during the bailouts. This was an article from back in 2009, and this shows you what the banking establishments are always up to. They get caught over and over again. They go to the maximum, derivatives, quadrillions in derivatives, gambling left and right, and they spent 
billions on the CEO bonuses and banker pay all because they're going to help themselves out long before they help you and I. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. And of course, if you found it informative, then I know you'll find my books, The Money GPS and Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. So go over to Amazon where you can see the Look Inside feature. It's going to allow you to flip through the pages of the book and see if you like it. Take care.